All right, guys, I'm on ground at a brand new permission. Already dug one signal, and it was kind of cool. A little tiny spoon bowl. And one of those aluminum play spoons. I'm not going to show you a whole ton of this location, um, but I do have electric fence. See the electric fence? It's all over us, and uh, Brandon's going to be coming out and hunting with me in a little bit. But the good news is, at this particular house, there are some massive trees, and those woods right out through there, dang if they don't look interesting. I may take a wander through the woods here in just a minute. Show you if I find anything good. This place is very park-like. Really pretty right now. Give it another month or so and it'll be a little bit hairy to crawl around in here, but I think we're good for now. Some big old trees around this place. I forgot how irritating it is to hunt by an electric fence. Just don't shut up. I did just get an older dime from the 60s and I think I got a Yep, modern quarter. Let's see what year it is. So, a few little coins laying around in here in the woods. 19. Hmm. Eighty-eight or ninety-eight? Can't tell. Not the oldest. All right, gonna keep going. Well, that got me excited for a second. I thought I had a sheriff badge, but I don't know what it is. Don't think it's terribly old, though. Anyway, cool find. Well, Brandon showed up. And after spending just a little while around that house, he's headed out in the woods, too. It is trashy. Oh my lord. <laughs> Enough of that crap. Where's that offer on? <laughs> yes. Oh. We got. Beautiful quarter. Oh, goodness. Definitely silver. It's not silver. <laughs> it's too crusty to find a date. All right. Wait, wait, wait. 85. 85. Okay. All right. Well, that place didn't produce a whole lot. A little bit of a modern coin spill, but not much else, besides a lot of trash. So following Brandon, we're going to change it up and go after something a little Native American. There's a cool piece of pottery poking out. This field has got tons of it on the ground. But I like the kind with design. Hopefully there's a point or two though. Yeah, it looks like a, maybe started out to be a yetchen. Here you go. Brandon just got a great piece of pottery. Look at that. It's a monster. That is really big for a plowed field. Nice little rim yeah. teeth there. Wow, I wonder how big the whole pot would have been. 50 gallons. Yeah. All right, so I got a pocket full of smaller stuff, but that was some of the cooler stuff that came out. And that might be my first nutting stone. It definitely has a good indention in it. Nice flat bottom. I think that's what it was. And of course, Brandon got a pretty awesome piece of pottery. That is decent for that fuel. All right, that's it for now. We'll catch you guys later. And it just tickles me to death. That's my little boy out there. 
hunting for artifacts. Been dying to get out. This is his first chance, so that tickles me. So we're gonna get out here and walk around and see what we can find. All right, what do you got? Some pieces of pottery that has some designs on it. Cool, you're finding it, aren't you? Yep. What else did we just find? Um, a, an arrowhead. Sticking we out got the a little bit of a bird point poking out of the dirt with some cool notching on it. Kind of a uniface type deal. Yep. And broken, but we'll take it. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> got pottery everywhere, don't we? Ooh. Find a piece? No, that's just dirt. Rock. This is where one of them videos where you could very easily slow this down and see all sorts of stuff that we're missing. It's just so much broken pottery in this field. Oh, so you're using a video to make it slow down no. and see what you Ooh, can... look at that piece. See it? Go straight ahead. Stop. I look just beside your left foot. See that grass? Go straight down. Oh, you just stepped on it with your right foot. Your hands right over you. Right under you. Big piece of pottery. That. Let's see. Wow, that is really cool. Don't have much in the way of design. I was hoping it had more design on it. Mm. But it's a good piece anyway. Yeah, well, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's old, ain't it? Ooh. What'd you find? That's a good piece. Oh, I see something white. Yeah. You see it? Yep. What is it? That is a rock. Well, I just got a pretty wild find for a surface find. Check that out. Picked it up because I wasn't totally sure. That's a big old honking musket ball. No detector needed. Very cool. I love the pottery for you don't ever know what sort of design you're going to roll up on. But look at that piece. That's a bullseye pattern going on. See that? Oh, now I see it. Circles. Very cool. See, there's another piece right there. Here. And another piece there. And some yep. marks on it. Very cool. All right, so here is what I got today. And we were just talking about our favorite pieces. And I guess that little flint piece is pretty cool. And I like that piece. I really liked this piece. I always felt like those are thumb indentations, like fingernail indentations around the rim of the bowl there. And a nice orange color. And then I was pretty happy about finding a musket ball on the surface. That was pretty darn cool. All right, bud, for your first day hunting, how did you do? Good. What's your favorite piece? I have a one. Markings and it's the lip of the bowl. I can't wait to wash this one off because this is going to look pretty good. Yeah, a big old piece of shiny quartz. What else? Anything else your favorite? Well, I got a piece of flint or something. A piece of flint. Yeah, where's that flint with all the black and the white? Have you got everything out of your pockets? <laughs> Check your other pocket. guys it's the next morning and you know after i eyeball a musket ball that i'm coming back well not as good as what i hoped been here a little while but i did pull another all right this is one of those finds that i know i've already found at one other location but i can't remember what i learned about it it's a uh 
course a brass casing but very narrowed down and if i'm not mistaken the last one had military dates on it you know from like the 40s or something i don't know that we'll get this one cleaned up let me give it a quick rub i'm not gonna be able to tell right now but if it has a date on it i'll show you and if it's got an interesting story i'll have to go back and look at the old video and see what i learned about it and relearn it oh boy little tennessee river trying to pop out the banks right over here and we've had a lot of rain You guys want to see something pretty rare pretty cool i vaccinate over two million fish a year and this is only the second one i've ever seen and i'm just going to let you see if you can spot it this is called best of my knowledge a blue trout and what it is is a rainbow trout that just lacks pigmentation Not complete pigmentation, just the pigmentation that the normal trout has. And it gives them a silvery blue color. Something else pretty rare. Gosh, there it is, there it is. That is a blonde coyote. Check that out. There's a gut pile over there that we dumped the dead fish at. I can't believe how close this thing is coming. Look at that. That's a really light colored coyote. I just picked this piece up and it's got that red hue to it as well and it is definitely an artifact maybe part of an ear right there yeah oh my gosh that would have been a beautiful one snapped at both ends but i don't think i've ever seen that color before very neat look at the piece of quartz crystal Goodness gracious. Imagine finding an arrowhead made out of that. Wow. Well, there's a yetkin right there. It's broke. I swear I think it's got a little bit of red in it too. Well, I say yetkin. I don't know what else to call these ones that have a flat base or slightly curved in base with a little bit of shoulders I call them Yadkins I may be wrong there's a flint one a little crude a little bit of a damage on the tip I'll take it 
And there is another piece of flint poking out. I don't know what that one is. It may just be a big flake or a blade. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry. Look at that. Very cool. All right, guys. I just got an incredible surprise from one of you subscribers who did not want to be named. They specifically said nobody needs to know. But I have to say thank you. You know who you are and just blown away at your kindness. So this coil right here is one I have never swung and you can tell it is a little bitty guy. The shrew cores or the core shrew. Just like the snake coil I've heard about and it gets between the trash. And I'm gonna try it in one of the trashiest places I know, right here at the tannery. Now I found some things here with the stock coil and the five by eight, but it's been a long time since I found anything here. There's a ton of trash out there. Well, let's see what the shrew, the cores shrew can do. You know how when you find a coin spill or several good coins in one little area, how many times you hit that? Well, I just brought the little shrew cores to one of those spots. Now I found a Standing Liberty, my first Standing Liberty quarter, and a pile of wheat pennies right here, all in this little area. I promise you this has probably been hit 30 times and I just haven't heard a signal. Well, just as clear as a bell, right in the middle of all of this, that little coil pulled this out. Looks like a cool little buckle of some sort. Look at that. Outstanding. That signal was just, it was a digger all day long. And I just have not been able to hear that. I know I've been over it before. Just a lot of trash right in here too. That is outstanding. Really excited about that coil. Wow. All right, guys, I came back to the old artifact pile that I sifted with this little coil. And I'm, of course, not hearing a lot of the targets here because this was Native American site. But we also had a bunch of rain, so I drifted over to the pile to take a look and I found this. Now that's interesting. That's a piece of that Knox chert. But, I don't know, it might be nothing, but it sure does look like it's been napped into that shape. Almost like, see all the little napping around the edges, except for right there? I don't know, that may have been a little game piece of some sort. Hard to say, but uh, it's interesting. Cool material anyway. Well, that little coil is doing the job. Been to this house several times, and I know I'm not the first one here by any means, but all of a sudden, I'm now pulling good targets, where before I found nothing much in the front yard. So, just pulled that a minute ago, and I just got a coin. Uh, this is either an old weedy, yeah, I see Abe. They had the green of an Indian head. Let's see what year we got. Now there's a big chunk of iron right next to this. Just off to the side of it, I caught a squeak. I doubt very seriously with a regular coil. I would have heard that. All right. Ooh, I think that's a 19 teens. Tell you what, let me work on this a second. It looks like a good old one. All right, guys, you're not gonna be able to see it because I can barely catch it, but that looks like a 1914. So that is a good old one right there. Very cool. Man, that coal's working out good. 
All right, so that is it for the metal detecting and artifact hunting. If that's what you came for, I appreciate you stopping by and I'll give you fair warning. Now's the time to leave. But if you want to learn something about what we found, and some of the stuff we found is fascinating, to me anyway, fascinating enough to keep me up at 1.45 a.m. Can't go to sleep tonight. Let's talk about pottery. All right, guys, what I have done is pulled out a selection of things that are gonna teach us a little bit. Man, have they taught me. I've had a good time tonight studying this stuff up. First, some of the artifacts that you saw in the video. There's that piece that I thought might be a little bit red, and it is. It's awesome. It's got that white stripe running up through it. That is also a great piece of chert. I've never seen that color locally. And a few other things, including a big old musket ball. And that piece of quartz. Which, that's really pretty stuff. I'm sure Native Americans would have picked that up and used that for something. Decoration, if nothing else, or jewelry. All right. This right here, I'm going to call this one the find of the hunt for me. Be I didn't say much about it. I didn't even film it because when I picked this thing up, I picked it up out of the field like this. And when I did, I felt that indentation on the backside. And, it, you know, to be honest with you, it's covered with dirt. And I just, I wasn't sure until I got back to the truck and then realized, oh my goodness, I just found my first nutting stone. So this, you know, this little divot right here, they would have put acorns or hickory nuts or whatever that they wanted to pound and bust. It's just a good place to hold it and then you take a hammer stone and pound it. But you can see the edges are all nice and worn off. Good flat base, absolutely what that is. Tickled to have it. Now, let's talk about this pottery. Not all of this came from this hunt, though most of it did. If you see just broken pots right here, oh my goodness, are you missing something incredible. Now, I've separated these out because they all have something in common. And do you know what it is? All of these pieces are pieces from the rims of pots. This piece in particular really shows that nicely. You can see inside of the pot, nice and smooth, the top flattened off. But you notice that a lot of these have something in common. What's going on with this right in here? What is this stuff? Well, believe it or not, what you are looking at in particular on this piece our fingerprints, absolutely what that is. You can even see where the nail has dug into the pottery. I love finding these types of pieces in particular. I mean, how cool is that? It is just amazing to be able to hold. Now, the Cherokee on these particular uh, style of pots you know, they, uh, you know, they did what, what's going on right here on the edge of this same principle on the edge of this piece of plastic. As the walls of the bowl came up at the top, they folded them over to give a double thickness to give a little bit of more strength to that bowl. And then on that folded over part, they would put a little design. Now let's see if you can see it. You can, right in the center there, you can actually see where it folds over on itself. Those are fingernails. Now, how do I know that? Well, I picked that up out of the field and I've picked up other pieces. There's other pieces like that that I've got in my collection. Here's another one right here. Fingerprints, fingernail gouges, okay. And I looked at it and I said, gosh, that looks like fingernail gouges. Now that is all the evidence I had to go on until I ran across an article from a man who observed Cherokee pottery being made at the end of the 1800s. And guess what he saw? Fingernail incising on the lips. He saw them actually doing it. 
when I read that, I felt so justified because, you know, I was almost felt silly saying that because I didn't truly know. I just suspected it, but I nailed it. Now, this one right here is a little different. Not all of that was done by fingernails. You can see that right there almost has a diamond shape to it, not quite curved like those others, half moon shape. This could have just been a, uh, you know, a, a sharpened stick or you know, even a piece of stone, just whatever they had handy um, to lay those indentations in there. I love those pieces. This piece is probably a little bit older pottery. A lot of this stuff, you're probably looking at the anywhere from the 15, 16, 17, even up into the 1800s. Probably closer to 15 and 16 on these though. This piece, you see they weren't folding over uh, yet. Not completely. They just pushed the lip out a little bit. That wasn't a complete fold over on this particular piece. Unless that uh, the thickening happened down here. And you can see that in this piece. You see this has got this design right here. This is the top of the bowl though. See that? So the thickening for strengthening happened a little bit lower on this one and they just raised the lip up. The insides of these would have been scraped and you know with shell or bone or even stone uh, to be smoothed out. Now these pieces right here What's going on with these? How artistic do you have to be to hand draw all these designs onto the outside of pots? Well, if you know your pottery, you know that that isn't hand drawn. Except for one piece. The only piece that has any hand drawn, hand -drawn design is this piece. And that's called incised pottery. And you can see it looks very different, very clear cuts. And so this was a hand-drawn piece and probably later than these pieces. These pieces were all stamped. And you think, where were they getting stamps? Well, they made wooden paddles and they actually carved design into the wooden paddles. So when this pot was made and still wet on the outside, they would slap that paddle repeatedly all over the outside of the pot, giving it a checkerboard design. Um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't pictures they were drawing. It was geometric shapes. And um, here you've got some bullseye type patterns. This is either a bullseye type pattern. They also had something that kind of looked like a number nine. So it would start up here and come down and end right in there. I can't tell which piece that is, uh, which kind that is. They've got checkerboard designs. Can you imagine carving that into a piece of wood with stone tools? It's amazing. Here you probably see the uh, two different paddle slaps onto the outside of the pot. This was pretty cool because if you look real close, zoom in real close. You see right here at the end, you actually see the end of the stamp. But right down here, it's like a totally different design. You got more of a checkerboard thing going on here. And then this, you just have these, these lines. But it was neat to see the termination at the end of the paddle there. This piece, I suspect, was made using cordage. That gives it a better view right there if I shade it a little bit. Right there. So braided fibers into whatever cordage that they would use, they would take that cordage and you know, stretch a piece of cord between their hands and then go around the outside of the pot and just use that cord design just to stamp a pattern all over the outside of the pot. And if you see the the uh, kind of the canyons here, it kind of, if you can imagine a stretched piece of rope going across wet clay, there's one, there's two, there's three. And so I'm pretty sure that's what that was going, that's, that's what was going on there. And these pieces, they're white. 
You see that very clearly. And so there was two main colors that Cherokee would sometimes use on the outside of their pottery and, uh, well, three. One's kind of a natural clay color, which is most everything that you find, but you do find white and you do find black. And so they were using colors. Well, lastly, this piece. Now this has not so much to do with artistic design as it does construction. This wasn't stamped, this wasn't hand drawn. This is the base of a pot. Now the bases were very, very small on, on, on a huge, you know, pot that, oh, much, much bigger than this. You know, something about that wide at the opening and, and maybe, you know, that tall would probably only have a base about that size. And you would think, well, that pot is just gonna fall over at the slightest touch. Well, the cooking pots in particular were made that way because they're not cooking on the eye of a stove, they're cooking in a campfire and those rounded bases would nestle down in the coals or in between hot stones. And so they did not need that, that big flat sturdy base and those cooking pots stayed right there in, in the fire and, and that's how they designed them. Uh, where was I going? Yeah, there it is. So this piece is a base, but it's coil pottery. So they would make a long, thin ribbon of clay and begin to coil it. And of course, as it got bigger and wider, then it would form up and make the walls and the sides of the bowl. But that's coil pottery. And that's maybe the only piece that I have that kind of really shows that coil pottery. Um, the walls, of course, this would have been smoothed out and, and paddled with designs. And so you're not gonna see that, but on the base, they left it on this one and that's a pretty cool piece. All right, is there anything else? Yes, one other thing, if I can find it, right here. So that's the outside of the pot, the inside. That's not painted, it's burnished. So after they fired a pot, one of the last things they would do is take something like corn cobs um, or uh, corn silks, several other plants that they knew of, and they would either throw them inside the pot and light them on fire and cover the top of it, or they would burn them with the pot upside down on top of it, and they released this really you know thick smoke and it coated and basically waterproofed the inside of these cooking jugs using that particular smoke and that black, some good stuff, cause boy, it stayed on there all these years. Okay guys, two o'clock, I am going to bed. I had to tell somebody about some of this stuff. It's just too cool not to sit around and talk about. If you hung around for the whole entire duration of the video, I appreciate it. We'll get back to you soon. Thank you.